What's going on, Ravens fans? Welcome into a fresh edition of Ravens Unscripted. Wow, eight straight wins and the latest coming in the rain against the 49ers. An unbelievable game. Hopefully you enjoyed it in the stadium or at home, cozy on the couch. We've got a lot to sort through, guys, and we've got a full couch. We've got Garrett and Cliff of Ravens Media. You know them. You know this guy, too, Jeff Zrebeck of The Athletic. Fellas, good to be with you. We start, as we always do, with four downs. First down, always start with Garrett Downing on this one. What else do they need to prove to you, Garrett? They've won ugly. They've won flashy. They win in the rain. And this one against a really quality opponent once again in the 49ers. I'm not sure there's much more they need to prove in the regular season. I think this is a team that's really going to have to prove itself in January. Or just get through the regular season. Just get there. <laughs> They're playing as well as any team in football right now. I think they have the best resume in the entire National Football League. What this game showed to me is that the Ravens can win a tough game when they have to go on in fourth quarter. Six minutes left, they can march down the field and get a game-winning drive. Like, that was the one thing that was kind of left undone up before this game. They needed to go up there and have a game that they don't blow people out. They, blew, they had blown so many people out where Lamar Jackson spent the fourth quarter wearing sunglasses <laughs> hanging out on the sidelines. You need to play a game against a quality opponent in a tight game. Can you do it? Do you get nervous? Do you buckle under pressure? They didn't do that. They showed that they can win a tough game, and I think that was a big step for this team. Yeah, I definitely think they also showed that they have so many guys who can step up you know, Chuck Clark, I've kind of been under the radar all year playing another great game at safety. You know, Chris Moore making a great play on special teams. Chris Wormley, a big deflection. Hayden Hurst with some big catches. Absolutely. You know that, you know, obviously Lamar has been the star of the show and they've got some other great players. But in a game that big, it was nice to see so many people step up. And then obviously, you know, the offensive line, McCarry's first start did well. So I like that aspect. It just wasn't the Lamar show. It was a total team effort. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think this team can make any more statements until January. <laughs> every statement's been made. As you said, they've won in every type of game. They've played great on the road. They've played good at home. Uh, they still have some business to take care of. You know, they haven't clinched a playoff spot yet. They're right on the edge there. They still have to clinch the division. But in terms of, you know, what they have to prove, uh, they have to prove they can win in the playoffs, and I think they've put themselves in pretty good shape to do that. All right, down number two here. This is the Lamar Jackson down each week. Cliff, first crack at it. The takeaway from this performance, the pass yards were, I think, the lowest of the season, but the conditions and what the defense presented offered the ability to do some other things. When you walked away 24 hours later and thought about Lamar, what came to mind? His grittiness, his determination, I think. He kind of put his stamp, I think, on the fourth quarter with just basically he's one of those players that – you know, put it on me, I'll figure out a way to win. Even if I can't do it through the air, even if I can't do it pretty, you know, I, I, they, I just feel that this team has so much belief in him that in tight situations, they really feel that there's no way they're going to lose, and it starts with him. So he just keeps coming. He refuses to stop. I thought this was another notch for him in terms of the MVP resume. I mean, I really do. I, I know the passing yards weren't there, but those conditions were about as bad as you can have on a football field. Cold, wet, rainy the entire game. He still had over 100 yards on the ground. To me, it's clear that he's the best player in this league right now. He's playing at an MVP level, and I don't think that it's particularly – that close. Yeah, I think the one thing that people don't talk enough about is his competitive spirit. It's off the <laughs> charts. Mm -hmm. His toughness, his competitive spirit, and I think what we saw against the 49ers is the Ravens have two closers. They have Lamar Jackson, and they have the best kicker in the league in Justin Tucker. Third down, the Buffalo Bills, a team that in years past, guys, you'd think, okay, this is a nice place to be. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll get through this one with some ease. Not the case. Buffalo's 9-3, they have a quarterback in Josh Allen who seems to have figured things out, and they have some conditions there at home that can be challenging. So, Garrett, as you've started to think about this opponent, what is uh, top of list? Yeah, it's going to be a tough game. But just the gauntlet for the Ravens right now, you go from Monday Night Football in L.A., then you get 49ers, now it's Buffalo. I think that Buffalo is a really good team. I like Josh Allen. I think that he has the ability to make plays. It's going to be a challenge for this defense, with his mobility moving around. So this is not – by any stretch, a gimme game. Now, the one thing that Buffalo hasn't done, they don't have a m many impressive wins on their resume, so I think you got to ask the question of how good of a team are they. But make no mistake about it, the Ravens are looking at this one like they're one of the best teams in the league. They're 9-3 and three for a reason. Yeah, I think that also, as you mentioned, Allen, mobility is kind of Ravens getting a taste of their own medicine mm -hmm. with a quarterback who can make plays with his legs, always uh, gives defenses trouble. 
And also, I think they can run the ball well. We did see the 49ers gain yards on the run on the ground against the Ravens. This is going to be another test for the run defense. So I think the Bills want to do what now all teams want to do with Lamar, keep him off the field. And if you can control the clock against the Ravens defense, then you have a better chance to do that. Obviously, you know, it's going to be, I think, a difficult game for the Bills, but they'll be up for it. Everybody's up for the Ravens now. We're talking about them, so is everybody else. Jeff, let's wrap you into fourth down here with what you see in Buffalo, but also maybe some predictions in this game as you look at maybe not just a score and who wins, but something you think you'll see. Yeah, I think you're going to see the Ravens get back to what they do best. And I don't want to say get back because it's not like they ever left. But, uh, you know, teams have shredded the Bills at times on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and the Bills don't make a ton of mistakes. Josh Allen has only turned the ball over twice in the last seven games. And I think he had four turnovers in week one. So he's really improved. Uh, but I think the Ravens are going to really try to control the game on the ground. I think they feel like that's an area where they could gain some traction. And uh, elements are always going to be difficult there that's a tough crowd to play in uh, but there's nothing more that drowns out a crowd than long clock eating drives that keeps the other team's offense off the field you know I, I agree I do think they'll be able to ground and pound but I also think the receivers will get a little bit more involved in this game the receivers yeah. were not involved really much at all against San Francisco as you mentioned only 100 yards passing for Lamar I think maybe Hollywood Brown hit him for a deep shot they haven't had many of the deep plays to him so that's one thing if you're looking for any sort of thing that's been missing from this offense it's been that as of late I do think the receivers will get a little bit more involved this game yeah also we we'll look out for the other Brown uh, John Brown who used to play for the Ravens I think that you know he's having a really good year for the Bills uh, Allen obviously has an arm to get it to him we know what his forte is going deep and I definitely would think that the Bills are going to take a couple of shots against the Ravens secondary. We know how good the Ravens secondary is, but I can't believe that they won't get tested a time or two when you have a weapon like that. So if the Ravens can eliminate him and keep him from making big plays, then obviously I think that will improve their chances. But that's one thing I'd look for. All right, this is all really great analysis. But, fellas, let's get some scores here. Just give me a <laughs> score and who wins. We'll go down the line. Cliff, start with you. Yeah, I like Ravens. I would say something like maybe 24-17. Uh, I think it's going to be another tough game for them, but I think they'll figure out a way to pull it out. I'm going Ravens 23-20, and uh, wouldn't surprise me if Justin Tucker's on there again, uh, ready to kick uh, kick it through the uprights and win in their game. I'll go say 30-21 Ravens. All right, I'm hoping for a close game because it's on CBS 1 p.m. <laughs> Your favorite announcers, tune in. Coming up next, issue or non-issue. Welcome back. After eight straight wins, it's hard to imagine many issues facing the Ravens, but who knows? The couch might have different ideas. Issue or non-issue, fellas? Lamar as a bad weather thrower, Garrett. Issue or non-issue? If you go through completion percentage against the 49ers, against the Seahawks, maybe throw in the Chiefs game where there was some bad weather at least early. I'm going to say moderate issue. <laughs> like, I'm not sounding the alarm here. That's a hedge, folks. Yeah, I'm not sounding the alarm, but I think that I made a joke last week that I feel like the one thing that can stop the Ravens offense is Mother Nature. Yeah. And you saw that a little bit on Sunday. And as I mentioned earlier, th that was about as bad of conditions as you could have for a passing game. But I do think that he doesn't look as sharp as a passer in these tough weather situations where it's cold and where it's rainy. Uh, Seattle was that way. Didn't have as great of a day in Seattle as a passer. And then again on Sunday. So I'm not too worried about it because I think the Ravens are so dominant on the ground and they're going to be able to move the ball on the ground where the passing game isn't going to be as important. But I think if you're in a game where it gets into a bit of a shootout, I would have a little bit of a concern there. I, I agree. I think it's an issue, um, moderate issue. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, look, the, the key football games are played in, in December and January, and you're going to get these conditions in, in most places. And I it just you watch Lamar after these games. Like, he was really frustrated mm -hmm. with how he was throwing the ball he and it, it seems like it's gotten in his head a little bit in terms of the wet conditions and, and we saw it a little bit last year at times but uh it's an issue that they can work through um you know and I'm sure he will and each time he plays in these conditions I think he'll get better but uh you know if you're looking at it and the games they're going to play down the stretch you have to think weather will become some factor yeah I think it's an issue it's an issue for all quarterbacks and that you know they don't like wet balls and would rather have conditions but I think that Lamar has a go-to with his ability to run that yeah. most quarterbacks don't so for him even when it is an issue he can make it a non-issue with what he does with his legs and yeah I, I just think that yeah on the, the faster the track 
the better it is for Lamar. And it, that kind of affects him, too, even as a runner. But I don't think it's a, over, an issue they can't overcome in, in bad weather as far as winning a football game, as he showed you against the 49ers. You never know. It might rain in Miami, too. So you probably <laughs> want to figure this out at some point. All right, fellas, next up, uh, run defense. Jeff, let's start with you here. Uh, look, the – the 49ers have one of the more successful zone stretch schemes, and they had some success against Baltimore. And now they face Buffalo with not necessarily the same thing, but three capable runners in Singletary, Gore, and the quarterback, Josh Allen. I'm going to say it's a non-issue just because – it's more of a confidence that it's an issue that they'll fix, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And, you know, look, everyone was uh, sounding out the alarms when the Browns ran all over them in week four. They can't stop the run. Now you look at them all these weeks later, and they have a top ten rushing defense, despite the fact that all year they've been bringing guys off the street to kind of plug in and play defense. I think the 49ers do stuff that nobody else in the league does. I think they had some schemes that really confused some Ravens, particularly rookie Jalen Ferguson, who's inexperienced and hasn't seen all this. Um, so I think he'll get better setting the edge. I think Judon will be better, and I think the defensive backs are going to have to tackle better. But, you know, I think teams are going to challenge him. It's a copycat. That league, but I think it's something they'll go to work on and they'll be able to slow down going forward. Yeah, I think it's a dire issue. I definitely have a lot of confidence that, you know, with the defensive front the Ravens have, it's, it's always going to be hard to run straight at them, you know, when you've got Pierce and Williams there along with the defensive tackles they picked up. So, yeah, now supposedly the outside, running outside is the key to beating the Ravens. But, again, that's something that I think they can address. I have a lot of confidence in Wink Martindale and really the players knowing that's how – Teams are going to try and attack them now. And I don't think that you're going to see teams week after week gashing them outside with big plays. It was, as you mentioned earlier in the season, it was kind of alarming how many big plays they were giving up on the ground. That issue's been fixed. I don't think this is going to crop up as a major problem. All right, next up, it's one of my least favorite sayings. If the playoffs started today, which <laughs> would be weird, uh, obviously Baltimore would have the number one overall seed. That's a great spot to be in. So issue or non-issue, Garrett, the idea that over the next four weeks here that they lose that number one spot and obviously home field advantage throughout. I think it's a non-issue. I think the Ravens are a team that can travel. I think they can win anywhere. I don't think this is a team that has to play at home. Would you like to have the road to Miami go through Baltimore? Obviously, you certainly would. And I think the Ravens are in position to do that. But if they were to have to go to New England, say, mm -hmm. I think that they could go and win there. I think that they've shown that they can win in tough atmospheres this year. They beat Seattle early in the season, which I thought was a statement win for this team. That was kind of the initial statement. Yeah. And they've continued to make them over the course of the last month. So I will say non-issue. I'm going to say non-issue, too. Now, I'm not dismissing the importance of home field advantage. You, we've all seen it in Foxborough time and time again how tough it is to win there. So I think they need that needs to be a focus once they clinch a playoff spot, trying to get that number one seed. But what the Ravens do travels. They run the ball. They play good defense. They play good special teams. That'll travel. They're going to have that. And uh, they have every reason to believe they can win no matter where they play in January. And they've earned that. So uh, while I think, you know, obviously home field will give them the edge, I don't think if they have to go on the road, particularly in Foxborough, that it is a major issue for them. I think they'll embrace that opportunity, and I could see them playing well. Yeah, I think getting the bye is, is, is crucial. Mm -hmm. But as far as, you know, the issue of going on the road, if they're not number one, I think they would be okay. Yeah, I think uh, this fan base and this couch would like it if they would be <laughs> able to stay home because these guys get to stay home. <laughs> More Unscripted coming up next. <laughs> Welcome back into Ravens Unscripted. Time for Ravens Mailbag. Make sure to tweet us here. Questions using the hashtag Ravens Mailbag, and you'll see it up here, possibly, on the big monitor ball. Jeff, you're our true guest here, so you get the first crack at this. Why don't the Ravens go no huddle? I mean, first of all, why this team's had so much success offensively, and even as a team, is because they've been able to maintain long drives. They've been able to control the clock, wear down defenses, keep opposing offenses on the field, uh, off the, on the sideline. This is not a quick strike team, and they've had success. And two, they haven't needed to. I mean, what's the point? I mean, they have had the they have the number two, uh, one highest scoring offense in the league, and usually when teams go to no huddle, it's to kind of change the rhythm of stuff to get their quarterback going. This Ravens offense has been in gear since week one, and they haven't needed to change up. All right, change it up. Next tweet here. <laughs> Next question. This one's for Cliff. Is this the best win of the season so far, obviously referencing the win over San Francisco? 
Yeah, uh, I hate to be a killjoy, but my favorite is still the Seattle win. Uh, I think that really got the Ravens' freight train rolling. Uh, if you can think about that game, the Ravens were losing 10-6 late in the first half until Marcus Peters got the pick six. And from then on, they dominated that second half of that game. And to me, that was the game that kind of convinced everyone, okay, the Ravens are good. Since then, they've shown you how good they can be. But I think that was a turning point in the season. That game, the Marcus Peters introduction to the defense, the way they won a tough road game with Seattle. I love the San Francisco win. I love all wins. But I think the Seattle win, to me, was my favorite. I'm going Patriots game. That atmosphere, Sunday night football, defending Super Bowl champions, that game, for me, top of the list. You guys leave me no choice but to go to the 49ers game. <laughs> ba battle between two of the best teams in the league and the win it at the gun. That one stands out to me. I'm going to go week one. I mean, that was an absolute <laughs> boat race. All right, last question here. And this one we save for when Garrett Downing. <laughs> if the Ravens clinch the number one seed before the Steelers game week 17, can you see Harbaugh benching, obviously sitting, Lamar and other starters? This is always that age-old question. Yeah, I don't think that they would sit the entire game. I think that they would probably get a half of work. Look, this would be obviously a good position <laughs> to be in, but I think that you won't want to go into a game like that and have these guys sit for two weeks, three weeks, really, before the next game because if you have the first round, you have the number one seed, you have a first round bye. So I think they would probably play about a, a half, and then maybe the second half they sit a number of guys. Look, there's not so many, there's, you don't have a ton of guys. It's not like mm -hmm. you have a 90 man roster. So a lot of these guys have to play during the regular season. So keep that in mind as well. Jeff, why didn't you ask this to John at the, question, <laughs> uh, the press conference on Monday? I think that would have been a classic case of looking too far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy to answer all your questions. Use the hashtag Ravens Mailbag and we'll get them up here on the big screen. And coming up, best of the rest here on Unscripted. Welcome back to Unscripted, closing out the show with best of the rest. There was so much to sort through positively from that 49ers win that the guys have some things that they feel like haven't maybe been talked about enough. So, Cliff, you get the honors of kicking us off here with the best of the rest. Yeah, I like the Ravens' offensive line. Uh, Patrick McCarry, obviously, you got to point to him. First start, played terrific. I saw him after the game. Everybody was celebrating. He went over to the Ravens' bench, kind of got on his knees, then looked up at the sky and kind of like took a deep breath. <laughs> he may do that after every game, but I don't think so. He didn't want to be the weak link with his first start. And then obviously the job that Jan has been doing all year, Stanley, uh, Bozeman, you know, it was supposed to be a weak link or possible weak link this offensive line back in the summer. They're, to me, they've been, as a unit, the best in football. So they, to me, aren't still aren't getting quite the love, but I think more and more people are paying attention to how good this line I mean, really just is. just quickly, I mean, you can't ask for a more challenging game for a center to come <laughs> off the bench and And, and, and this play is it. a week after having to step in in the first quarter and block Aaron, Aaron Donald. Donald. That's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. It's all, I, I'm with you. They just say more good things about him. Yeah. Come on. Um, <laughs> Jeff, what's your best the rest? You know, I think we saw the 49ers, Ravens, the offense versus defense matchup and both sides was pretty even. I don't think you could declare a winner. Both sides made some plays. Where the Ravens clearly had the edge in that game was special teams. And we've seen it time and time again. We know the Ravens' reputation for special teams. They continually win games because they put out the better special teams unit than the other team. Um, Harbaugh acknowledged there was three game-changing plays on special teams. There was obviously the game-winning field goal by Justin Tucker, which is an absurdly tough kick in those conditions with that what's on the line. You had you had the blocked kick from Marlon Humphrey that took away points points from the 49ers and then you had Chris Moore and Sam Cook combining the flip field position when he dove and uh, stopped the ball from going to the end zone and uh, you know downed it at the one yard line it's it's been a, a theme of this team for years now and uh, they deserve to be recognized they continue to outplay people and, on special and what's teams. great is they weren't asked to be a big part of the success mm -hmm. over the recent weeks but when called upon they right. stepped up and, and made huge plays all right Garrett what's yours 
I'm going to point to Chuck Clark, the safety who kind of flies under the radar on this defense. You look at that secondary, you got Earl Thomas, you got Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, Jimmy Smith. But the guy who's wearing the headset that's communicating with everybody, the plays from the sideline to everybody out there on the field, is Chuck Clark. He's moving all over the place. He stepped into the starting lineup after the unfortunate injury to Tony Jefferson. And Chuck made a game-changing play against the 49ers with that strip sack that ultimately set up a touchdown. I mean, the Ravens needed a play at that moment of the game. And Chuck Clark came up and made it. It. And I just think overall, when you look at what he's done over the past, you know, couple of months, you got to be really impressed with this guy. Late round pick to step in for a key player and play a really high level. Yeah, I think he's been the unsung hero of this team, and I, I think it's clear. I mean, they have several of them. But this is a guy that's come in, and everyone was so worried about the communication on defense. Tony Jefferson was wearing the headset. And, uh, you know, they haven't missed a beat, and their defense has continually gotten better. Yeah, and I just think as much as Lamar, rightly so, has been the rocket ship that this team's riding nationally in terms of attention to, underrated has just been the ability of this front office to find players to step in when they need it or just guys coming in. We just you know, talked about McCarry coming in. That, that, to me, has been as big a story as any for this team. Yeah, no question. And a guy like Chuck Clark deserves a lot of credit, you know, knowing that he wasn't going to play when they had Eric Weddle. Yeah. You know, you bring in a guy like Earl Thomas, Tony Jefferson. He was patient instead of just being yeah, Some worked. guys would mope. Absolutely. He instead, everyone talked about how much he knew the playbook inside and out. He was totally ready when this opportunity came. So, you know, he deserves credit. The coaching staff obviously deserves credit for coaching him up. But you don't always see that when a guy gets his opportunity. He's really seized the moment. Yeah, it might be a stretch for Chuck Clark to be a pro bowler, but there are definitely pro bowlers on this team, and they need your vote. So head to NFL.com backslash pro bowl vote to help get some Ravens into that game in Orlando. Fellas, great job on the couch as always. Fun to be with you. Fun to have you guys watching and listening. Enjoy the game this weekend. We'll see you right back here next week. Thanks.